Now, I have a major distrust in racing games, but I still want to give them a fair chance without spending money, which is why this video wouldn't have been possible without Gamefly. Try out games for as long as you like without spending a single cent. If the game blows, send it back. If you like it, you can keep it for a low, low price. You can start with a 30-day free trial. If you're satisfied, you can choose either a one game for the first three months rental plan for $9.50. It'll be $16 for the following months if you're satisfied, of course. Get a two game for the first three months plan for $13.50. That will be $23 for the following months, once again, if you're satisfied with the service. Gamefly did not pay me for this. I just fully support their practices and have been a satisfied customer for five years. Now on to the video. Passion. It's how we do what we do. To make something beautiful. To change the game. It's that drive that fuels us. Ah, Sonic the Hedgehog. What can I say? He can really move, he's got an attitude, and he's the fastest thing alive. Then why does he need to be in a freaking car? He can just run laps around everybody and tell them to shove it. But nah, Sonic's an honest joke. Yeah! That's what makes him so cool, right? But anyway, let's take a look at the Sonic racing games that I've played from earliest to latest. It all started innocently enough with Sonic Drift on the Game Gear. I specifically playing it on my Sonic Adventure DX save data. Well, here it is, Sonic Drift. I guess with Mario Kart giving the console racing genre more prominence, my guess is that Sega wants to jump in on the fun. After all, Nintendo and Sega were rivals at the time. Sonic Drift is a very standard and straightforward racing game. It's easy to pick up and play if you're new to it. It has a Chaos Grand Prix mode, where you race for the first place spot against the computer opponents. There's Free Run, which acts as this game's time trial. Race for the best time and brag to your friends saying, Yeah! I'm the best at Green Green Hill, douchebag! There's Versus, but I can't play it because I have no friends with me right now. <laughs> Well, this is it! The first Sonic racing game! Sure, nowadays it's nothing special, but think back when it was new. I would have put so many hours into this game, probably as many hours as Super Mario Kart back in the day. The controls are pretty good, the soundtrack is nice, and the graphics are nice and colorful. One tiny issue I have with this game are the turns. The bends come at you like a bat out of hell, and will jerk you off road if you're not ready. If you've ridden the Cyclone roller coaster over at Coney Island in Brooklyn, then you know exactly what I mean. There is a bit of a learning curve, but once you play the game long enough, you'll know how to properly approach those turns. The game has four characters, Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Eggman. It doesn't sound like much, but think about it. This game was released in 1993. All we had at the time for mainstream Sonic games were Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Sonic CD, so there wasn't a lot to choose from. Each character has their own unique abilities if you collect enough rings. Sonic gets a speed boost, Tails can make easy turns by jumping, Amy tosses heart traps, and Eggman tosses bombs. Well, that is creepy. That's why I'd either play Sonic or Tails, cause there's no nightmare fuel after the race. So there you have it, Sonic Drift. Not bad, it's a pretty nice and safe start for the Sonic Racing series. Time to move on to the sequel, Sonic Drift 2. This time, I'm playing in our copy of Sonic Gems Collection. Well, that's a much better title screen. And look, more characters! Oh, so here's Sonic Drift 2, another great entry to the Game Gear library. I also found out that Arc System Works to co-develop this game. Wow! That explains the amazing visuals! You probably know them for games like Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, Dragon Ball Mash, I, I mean Fighters and pretty much any beautiful looking 2D anime style fighting game. But anyway, the sequel added three new characters to the roster and a much more unique assortment of stages. <gasps> so, so, 
Push! That's right, we have Sonic, Tails, Amy, Eggman, Fang, Knuckles, and Metal Sonic. And look at all these stages! Jeez, where do I begin? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just having a great time with this game. Even the game's soundtrack is a lot livelier than the first one. Just listen. Staying on the subject of improvements, the turning is better, I think. Maybe after playing the first one, I think I fully adapted to the short horizon. But let me tell you about the cave levels. The turns in the caves are much slower, and far more forgiving for that reason. I find myself gravitating to those levels when I replay the game. <laughs> Other than that, there isn't much else to say about Sonic Drift 2. It's an improvement from its predecessor in almost every department. So? What's next? Well, we're moving on to Sega Saturn territory, and boy, is this next game an experience. Ugh. <laughs> All right. So, what 1997 games do you remember back in the day? Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Star Fox 64, Mario Kart 64, Mega Man X4, Abe's Odyssey? Well, let me tell you something. Probably not this. Oh, man. So, Sonic R is the first 3D racing game in the Sonic series, and sure it looks like it. It's just, uh, I... Oh my god. Let's get straight to the point. This game is not that great. I mean, it's not the worst Sonic racing game I've played, but jeez, the controls are terrible! It's like a bunch of drunkards having a foot race after ingesting two gallons of bourbons. Ready, set, go! I can't tell you how uncomfortably loose these controls are. You'd have to try it for yourself, and I wouldn't wish that upon you. I mean, it looks like I'm doing well, but can you imagine how stressful this was? This is more stressful than trying to do your own taxes. Also, yeah, I just stuck with Sonic during these races because I stopped caring and I just wanted to get through it all and unlock the hidden level, Radiant Emerald. Yeah, it's called Radiant Emerald. Now, let's talk about the tracks. You know how most racing games before it had leagues or cups or whatever, comprising of four or five tracks? Well, that's not possible for Sonic R. Why? Because there are only five tracks. FIVE TRACKS! Now, for a Sega Saturn game, that's unacceptable, but it's a hidden blessing, so I don't have to play through this game for so long. This track, Regal Ruin, pisses me off! Come on, which, which way do I go? Oh, wow. <laughs> this is awful. This is so awful. This has to be the most convoluted racetrack I've ever played in my racing game career. Ugh, oh, screw this game. Oh yeah, soundtrack is awesome too. But I just don't feel like talking about this game anymore. I'm done. Next game. Okay, time to bump up 13 years into the future, and... Wait. Before I move on to All-Stars Racing, let's dial it down to 2006 and 7. These are Sonic Rivals 1 and 2, being released in 2006 and 2007 respectively. Now, I've never owned these two games, but I have played them, thanks to my friend Naruto Jr. owning a PSP back in the day. By the way, you should subscribe to his channel, or better yet, check out his SoundCloud. You will not be disappointed. So real quick, the Sonic Rivals games are like a 2D racing platformer adventure hybrid. The stories mostly revolve around your typical Sonic game, story adventure. Sonic and his friends, or rivals in this case, stop Eggman by going through a series of stages and boss battles. Only difference is that competitive one-on-one -on -one racing was thrown into the formula. Not a bad idea, and it was a pretty simple concept. The games were co-developed by Backbone Entertainment. You probably know them by the million Street Fighter conversion. <clears throat> 
Super Street Fire 2 Turbo HD Remix. Goodness gracious, say that five times fast. But seriously, are they ever going to stop milking this almost 30 year old game? Ultra Street Fighter 2, the final challengers. Ah! So yeah, I can't personally say much about the Sonic Rivals games in my history of Sonic racing games. I kind of wish they would port them to a home console or something. They were pretty fun games. Alright, fast forwarding to 2010. Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing! This one is a big crossover featuring, well, Sega's All-Stars through the years. This one goes back to the kart style racing, like the Sonic Drift games. I think it's no secret to anyone who has seen my previous Sonic racing videos that this is my number one favorite Sonic racing game. I'll try not to gush too much, but I won't make any promises. So, this game has quite a lot to offer. Standard races, Grand Prix, Time Attack, Mission Mode, and even a shop where you can purchase extra characters and music. The shop is actually one of my favorite spots because it's set to the most 80s sounding music you'll ever hear in your life. To the gameplay, if you're wondering why I love this game so much, it's because of this. This is the first game where I feel like no matter who I choose, I have a chance to do well. The controls are just that good. It's just about adapting to their stats and their stunt animations. Should I do one stunt or two? It all depends on who you choose. Some characters have fast stunts, some are slower. The animations they perform are random, so you have to decide the right moments to do them. But the best thing about this game is that it's heavily skill based. This game proves that you can have items, but no shenanigans. <coughs> Mario Kart. <coughs> oh, ooh. Oh, bad cough. Even if the latter happens, you can catch up to your opponents with driving skills alone. No artificial speed up bullcrap like the other racing games. Even if your racing game knowledge is rudimentary, I feel that you can pick this one up quick. It's just that good. One last thing I need to cover is the announcer. By the great Soul Emeralds, I love this announcer. Welcome to Casino Park, where the track's guaranteed to be dicey. Get your game face ready, you're gonna need it here. Ow, oh, PD Joe won't like that. Normally, I don't like a lot of talking during gameplay, but this is a grand exception. Dan Green plays the role of the announcer, and he really puts a lot of spark into the already wildly entertaining game. It's all just such a wonderful effect, and I wish Sega and Sumo Digital would replicate this feeling. But they just couldn't recapture it. Which brings me to the next game. Oh god, kill me. Let it go. It is not a sin to fight for the right cause. There are those who words alone will not reach. This sentimental downpour is killing me. Drop your restraints. Protect the life I love. <laughs> Yet another fighter you could have saved.
I don't care if you're digital only. I will send you back to hell. So, this is Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed. The unholy sequel. The Dracula X of Sonic Racing Games. The Mega Man X7 of Sonic Racing Games. I mean, what's the point of talking about this game when I've already covered my thoughts on this crap in another video? Yeah, if you want to check it out, the link's in the description below. Alright, so because of that, I'm not going to drag this on like the intro I edited. But I guess I can say a few good things about it. The graphics are nice, and the music is great. But those are usually the redeeming factors for games like this. I mean, I can't say much! The announcer's boring. Ah, uh, stunt fails, stunt fails, stunt fails! I'm not blind, freaking idiot, I know! The controls aren't as tight as the first game, and the AI is either too easy or artificially difficult. You know what? I'm gonna check the scores for this game. What? 8 out of 10? Sonic's new racing adventure speeds past its predecessor and delivers a kart racer that can keep up with the best in the genre? 4.5 out of 5? More phenomenal? 9 out of 10? Are you freaking kidding me? In all seriousness, I do pride myself in respecting people's opinions, but I have to say this. You're telling me a game that has this happening Oh my- What?! No, come on! I was still on the track, you stupid, filthy cock! This... Okay, there we go, there we go- Oh! <laughs> what the- What?! I wasn't even out of bounds! What? And this... Oh, I got him, but he's still- Look, 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 look! I hit him! He didn't even slow down one bit! Deserves high scores? Well, maybe these stupid things are only happening to me. I, I don't know. All I know is that those issues really took the enjoyment out of the game for me. <sighs> that is all. On to the next game. Throwing out weapons out there. And Mimi's supposed to be slower than me! I hit a sin! She didn't hit it! It's a repeat of the, the skies of Arcadia level. Oh man, she, she passed you like- Mimi's not supposed to be faster than Sonic. I used the speed mod! Finish him! At last, we have Team Sonic Racing, and boy is it an improvement over its predecessor. Following the success of Sonic Mania and the uh, not-so-successful Sonic Forces, they decided to reevaluate the direction for Sonic and make a racing game. Back then I thought, are they freaking stupid? A racing game is the last thing Sonic needs! But it turns out that I was the stupid one because Team Sonic Racing was actually pretty rad. So, Team Sonic Racing is a game that mixes your typical fantasy style racing games with teamwork. It's definitely a step up from Transform because of better control, track design, and more balanced AI. Somewhat. But we'll get to that later. Man, Sega and Sumo Digital really brought the big dogs over for this game's soundtrack. This game's music is so good, it will kick you so hard in the nest that you'll turn inside out and instantly die forever listening to all the songs for your eternal afterlife! As stated earlier, the controls in this game are much better than the more phenomenal transformed. But there are some minor problems with the game's controls and overall gameplay. First off, the boosts in this game feel incredibly weak. It doesn't feel or sound like the character's going any faster after a boost. The ultimates are a little too overpowered. Also, why the heck does Team Rose get, get it like every 30 seconds in a race? That's BS! The item shenanigans are kinda annoying in this game, but not nearly as bad as Transformed. Neither is the magical AI rubber banding, though it does have its stupid moments.
wow. So much for driving skills, huh? Well, it doesn't happen as frequently as- Ah, you already know. Despite these issues existing, they greatly toned it down, and there is still fun to be had. At first, I thought the over-reliance on teamwork would be a problem, but it makes it all the more interesting. Though there are times where your AI partners really weigh you down, and you end up losing the race, even though you came in first. Now that's the issue with the team mechanic. Overall, Team Sonic Racing is a huge improvement over Transform, but it's not as good as Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. But for what it is, I give it a pass. Thank you for watching, see you later. Alright, you have reached the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, just let me know what I can work on, you know, the, the, the editing and stuff, you know, writing, you know, what I, what I said and stuff, you know, you know, nothing's perfect. So, you know, just drop me some crits and I'll take it to account. Other than that, um, I did miss a few things in the video. Like I forgot to talk about Sonic Riders and Sonic Riders Zero Gravity. Oh my God, how could I forget that? I mean, Sonic Riders was an awesome game. I mean, tons of modes, lots of characters, lots of gear, nice sense of speed. It was all just fun, you know, and manual tricks. Well, Zero Gravity was a very weak sequel. I, it, you know, I, I didn't care for it. It, it was very slow. Uh, no, the, the tricks are automatic. It all depends on like when you jump off now. And it's just, I don't know, it's, it's very slow. I, I just, yeah, don't care for it. Uh, but it's not terrible. I mean, it's no, it's no Transformed or anything. <laughs> I'd rather play that than Transformed or Sonic R. Also, I, I have to say, um, this video was actually supposed to be finished in like June or July, but you know, with the combination of, you know, work and art commissions and procrastination, I got it done in October. Sorry about that. Also, um, I also wanted to touch on the games that I played between those times, you know. Uh, I, I, I loved Crash. Great game, Crash Team Racing. Way better than your original. Uh, I like I love Bloodstain despite it being an incredibly frustrating game. Um, by the way, I, I have a video that I have to publicize because now it's unlisted right now, but I'll share it now. I, I beat the game, so you know, it's 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 a funny thing to look back at. And but anyway, Super Mario Maker 2, of course that's fun. I made so many levels, I it's just way too much fun. Um, Astral Chain is an excellent game. I had lots of fun with it. Just this the base game. The after story is garbage. Um, what else? Link's Awakening was a lot of fun. Of course, that game was my childhood. It was the first Zelda game I've ever played. Um, and uh, uh, Gunfall Chronicles Luminous Adventure X was terrible. Oh my god, it's awful. This is the first bad Gunvolt game. I'm sorry. I don't care what anyone says. That game was terrible. Um, and lastly, uh, Ukulele and Impossible Lair. I have a lot of fun with that. Way more challenging than I thought it would be. But yeah, I I'm not done with it yet, but you know, I'm still having lots of fun. And about Let's Plays, I don't know. I feel like I've been burning out. I haven't done a Let's Play in a while. I don't know. I'm kind of bored. Not recording or, you know, anything. It's just, I don't know. I just got, you know, bored doing the whole editing process. I'm like, oh my god, I have to do these episodes, blah, 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 blah. It's like, ah, uh, plus I'm doing all this art stuff, and it's like, you know, I, I, I put art over, you know, editing videos and stuff, and the editing videos is just for fun. I actually want to make a career out of my art, but, um, yeah, I got tired. Maybe I'll do some Let's Plays in the future, but they'll be like, you know, you know, they'll be spread out. But with Luigi's Mansion 3 in the horizon, I don't know if I'm going to do a Let's Play of that. I'll probably do some drama stuff. Yeah, drama's fun, right? I'm going to do some dramatic videos for that. That pretty much sums up everything and caught up and, you know, like I said before, let me know what I can work on and, oh, also give me some suggestions for editing, for video editing software. I'm getting real tired of Sony Vegas. So, yeah, that's it. Um, have a wonderful day and stay away from terrible games.